Welcome to CUWFalcons.com podcast with women's hockey head coach Jim Engman to talk about the 2012-2013 season. Coach, if you could first, uh, let's get your thoughts on the season and how things went. I think one word sums it up. It was frustrating. I thought that this team was more talented than some other teams we had in the past, but our youth start, our youth showed, um, in our, and that caused some lack of production and goal scoring. But in turn, uh, we did have some positive things, and a couple areas was uh, penalty killing and our team defense, some of the best we've ever had here. So hopefully we can use that as a step for the future uh, to, to take that and improve on the other areas, and hopefully that will help improve the overall aspect of our team. One of the things you mentioned was youth of this team. Uh, 20 of the 23 players who finished the season were underclassmen. What challenges did you face in having such a young team with, with so many freshmen and sophomores still trying to transition to the collegiate game on the ice? Well, there's numerous challenges that you deal with. One, you don't know what the player has learned and what they haven't before they got here, and they all came from different types of systems, different types of teams, from winning teams, from losing teams, from different areas of the country. Uh, so it's been a, uh, uh, it was a tough year in that aspect to get them all on the same page, and I felt we did a great job, like I mentioned, defensively and getting everybody on the same page of what we were trying to do. Offensively, a lot of that is creativity and just time playing together, um, and that's one area we really struggled at. I felt that everybody was trying to do something different out there, uh, and that'll take some time, especially for the younger players to realize what they can get away with going in college and what they can't. Uh, and honestly, some players have, are put in different roles now offensively, where in the past it, they weren't in position where it mattered if they scored goals, where here they're going to be in that position where when they get opportunity to score goals, they got to score them. And I, I think that's one of the areas we'll, we'll need to grow in is those players now need to learn. They need to be able to put the team on their shoulder and score those goals when we get those opportunities. There has to be a part of you that's excited to know that with so many underclassmen uh, next year, two years, three years down the road, that the experience that they got this year playing while they're so young is really going to help them two and three years down the road. Oh, it'll help them greatly. And you look at the players um, that we have coming back, they all provide uh, a lot in both ends of the rink. It's just that you didn't see it offensively. Um, I'll use a couple names, Emily Heckendorf. Uh, she's co she's really capable of being one of the better players in college hockey, and she's getting there. She's learning how to play both ways, but there's a person who came from boys hockey um, transitioning into the women's game, which is a different game, and, it, and I think it's important that she's learning how to play both ends of the rink now. Uh, she's still a little timid. She could be a very dominant player offensively. Uh, Michelle Muscle is another player who has a lot of potential offensively with her speed and hands. Uh, and she'll get there. She's starting to realize what she can get away with and what she can't. Um, Olivia Vogel he had numerous opportunities the second half of the year to score goals. Uh, she's got definitely a college-level wrist shot, which will help go a long way. It's just getting it off now. Catherine Paletti transfer, transitioned into playing center, uh, so that was long as them. But if you ask her, she'll probably tell you she had a lot of chance to score goals that, that she wishes she'd get another chance at. And I can keep going on and on. We had all those freshmen did a great job for us. And uh, the nice part is that not all that goal scoring, but also on the back end of the rink uh, defensively, our three freshmen D played a lot of minutes and. They weren't out there for many goals, which is going forward, that's huge to get a lot of ice time and uh, learn from your mistakes and continue to improve, which those three freshmen and Jada Horace, Chelsea Reagan, and Hannah Zobel did a great job with. Now, one of the, the challenges and difficulties this season was, like you said, getting the goal in the back of the net, uh, averaging just 1.36 goals per game. What what do you need to do differently next year and into the years coming to, I guess, change that, to, to get the puck in the back of the net, to score three and four goals and make it harder on your opponents? There are areas that we can improve in. Uh, first of all, one area is up to the players to work on shooting. they got to work on taking shots, getting better quality shots, and uh, putting the shots in locations where even if you don't score, uh, we can get a rebound. That's up to the players, but there are things we can do, uh, which we I already have looked into offensively to try to 
keep someone near the net instead of having where all three players are somehow on one side of the rink is always keep someone around that net to create traffic. And uh, that's what we're going to need to do. And the third area is up to me, um, is our power play. Our power play percentage was, I'll be honest, brutal. Uh, and that's really up to me. Um, we had only 11% the first half of the year and 86 the second half of the year. We didn't score a power play goal in the last six games of the season. And that was on over 20 opportunities on the power play. If you score one power play a game in these close games, that's the difference between wins and losses a lot of times for us this year because of how we play defense. So we need to figure out a power play uh, that works for us and execute it properly every time. Um, one, that'll get with age, but two, that's putting in a, in a power play that will work for the type of players we have, and I, I know we just haven't found that yet. Now, uh, not being able to score many goals, it put a lot of uh, pressure on your goaltenders to stop a lot of pucks. They did very well this season, uh, having four goalies uh, see action in net, three of them who made starts. Having four goalies enter the season, three of them finishing, all being sophomores, having that experience from freshman to sophomore year, how did you see them grow? I think it, they now they know more of what to expect in a game. There's still a mentality of, I think, when we get up, uh, that they feel a lot of pressure on themselves, which they need to get over. But it was nice to see both Chen and Caitlin had great ends of the season for us. Um, they, they had a couple bad games each down there, but I thought they improved well. The big thing for them in the off season is coming in prepared. And I felt uh, that this year, that's one thing uh, all of our athletes really, some did well, but all can improve on is what they do in the summer to prepare for the season. And they want to keep getting better. And that's, you know, being physically fit, ready to play, um, working on some part of your game to make you better. And I think that showed because come the second half of the year, after a half a season of playing, they were back to where they were the first year. Um, and, you know, a little bit of injuries with that. Uh, Jen started out the year with a concussion issue that took her out of a lot of games and training-wise, and that hurt. And Caitlin had a back injury. And that back injury, when you have a back injury, it doesn't go away in the hockey season. It just keeps lingering, and it took her a long time to get back. And I feel that until this Eau Claire series at the end of the year, this was the first time she looked healthy, moved like she was healthy. So that's going to be the most important for both those two is just to be ready to play when they get here. And, of course, there'll be new challenges. You just mentioned with three sophomore goalies, four to start the year, um, we can't be in that situation much longer. So we will have freshman goalies here next year on campus that will be challenging, and they're going to come in and want to challenge for those spots. So that's the thing now is uh, they're going to learn that they have the experience, which goes a long way, but it's going to push them into being wanting to play. And uh, that's the important part is having a challenge of wanting to play. But I'll get to it that they were 88% the first half of the year, which isn't bad considering how we played. They were 92% save percentage the second half of the year with a couple games that inflated that. Um, so there's nothing but a positive outlook there in that. Now you talked about the second half of the season, how your goaltending got better. Your defense as a whole was much better in the second half of the year. Um, allowing two goals or less in 12 games. Talk about your defense and how it grew throughout the season with you guys being so young and your goaltending getting better. Towards the, the last couple of games, how satisfied were you with the way the defense played? I was pretty satisfied. I can't, I can't even say pretty. I was greatly satisfied is that we kept transitioning with different defenses the second half of the year and we were able to adjust. The, really the key to our defense is five players working together along with the goalie to keep the puck out of the net. The goalie's got to make the first save. After that, the defensive players have to make sure that you don't get a second shot, and they did a great job with that. Um, I think our centers and our defensemen are the most important part of that, of keeping the puck to the outside, making sure there's nobody up the middle of the rink where you're most susceptible to giving up good goal-scoring opportunities. But really, like I mentioned the first point, of letting having the team take a bad first shot and not letting a rebound happen, a, a second shot opportunity. And that goes to all five players on the ice. College hockey is an active game now, and you'll see a lot of uh, defensive players jumping into the play to play offense. Everybody likes to score goals, so everyone gets to the green. So that makes everybody's job important on the rink. And I think that was a C, is five players along with the goalie working together to keep the puck out of the net. 
And one of the one of the things I saw towards the second half of the season that got better was your penalty kill. Uh, touch on that and how important it is to keep uh, opponents out of the penalty kill, but when they do get into it, limiting them on their shots and, and when they do get the puck in the net. Well, there's two aspects to that question you said. Is one staying out of the box? We did a much better job the second half of the year staying out of the box. I think we we ended up being one of the least penalized teams in our conference. In turn, we had more power play opportunities than most teams, and we that's another whole area to talk about. The penalty killing is really about understanding what you're doing out there, and when you're dealing with all underclassmen, um, you look at our penalty kills mostly freshmen. Um, learning how to kill out there is that you need to be able to adjust while you're out there is you got to adjust to what you see and what the other team's going to do and good power play units will keep adjusting their power play to try to find openings i give our killers credit out there and um they did a great job if you look at who killed a lot for us sammy Ryder, olivia vogel katherine paletti lexi mashuga nina push up front all three freshmen d down low along with sarah cole and Emily Hackendorf came back as a defenseman on the penalty kill, which was huge for us. But that group, we returned it all except for Sarah Cole. But we returned over eight killers that went 88% on the power play the last from Christmas on. I mean, a penalty kill. 88% penalty kill would be number one in the country if you saw it. Uh, in turn, first half was 65%. So if you look at that improvement alone, that shows – a group of players going, all right, we need to figure this out. We're going to work on it, and we're going to understand it. And I give them a lot of credit. They started to understand it uh, more, and even when they did give up a shot, they understood where the other players would be. Is really when you give up a shot, that player is usually not right next to the net. It's the other four that are close, and, if all, and then it's four on four down low, basically. But you can't emphasize penalty killing enough, and you can't emphasize how important it is to have – players that want to be on that rink and they want to do that job well and I think that group really took it upon themselves to do better. Now we had the first pink game in program history this year. It was also senior weekend uh, with Sarah Cole and Carly Pyrus uh, being the only two seniors on the team. You could see they brought a lot of leadership and experience even though there was just two of them. What did, what did they bring to this program, just being two of them, uh, with their experience and their off-the-ice, um, I guess, character? Experience-wise, they bring from the winning years to the re what I call the rebuilding years right now. Um, it seems like nobody remembers two years ago we had 13 wins here and played in the Final Four. The year before, we had over 10 wins. We had two winning seasons in a row. Um, and you just don't get there uh, quickly. Um, like I use my good friend Rob Morgan at St. Norbert. He was under a lot of pressure up there from their men's team, and their men's coach came in and go, remember, it took us 17 years to win a national title. Nobody remembers how long it actually takes to get good and be consistently good. And we got good in four years, but it takes some time to be consistently good, and we, we learned. I learned that we need to be bringing in consistent classes on that and to move on. But those seniors, getting back to that, they were able to go from the highs to lows, and I think they did a great job staying with it, sticking through. But more importantly, I think what you're, the returning players get out of it, what good people look like and uh, what being a student athlete looks like. You look at those two, what they major in, um, management and marketing double major for Sarah Cole, exercise, uh, I mean sports management minor on top of it, and Carly Pyrus being a pharmacy major. Those aren't easy programs to go through. And you look at their grade points, they're both NCHA scholar athletes. Um, that goes a long ways. And that's one thing I think every senior and junior group have pushed off to the sophomores and freshmen, how important academics is and being a good person off the ice. You won't find a better group of seniors, but you also won't find a better group of underclassmen that got that leadership from those seniors. Uh, Coach, finally to, to wrap up this podcast, what is the outlook for 2013-14? Well, that's going to be an interesting year. We have a new conference. Um, the schedule looks totally different than it ever has. It's been unique for us. We have more non-conference games. The, uh, the new conference schedule allows us to get seven non-conference games instead of five. Uh, we will be playing all private schools this next year, which will be interesting, being us being a private school. I think that fits in well for us. Um, but it's a new conference with the old name. 
in turn, though, it will be a new era for the NCHA, and really this next year will be everybody wants to be the first one to win it with the new teams or a new outlook. Um, so it's going to be exciting. If you look at the Final Four, which is coming up this weekend in the, the last year of the current NCHA, two private teams, two public teams in it, so it's not like we're at the bottom of the barrel. A lot of our private teams were very good. And it just happened, and with no fault of the of the women's teams in the WIAC, that they wanted to go a different direction, and that's fine with them. And I wish them the best of luck. And we're going to move forward with our seven-team conference and have a have a great year. But I'm excited um, with a new start date, November 1st. That gives us a little bit more time before we play games. Um, and with the schedule, it, it gives us an, a, a schedule that when you look at it, it's exciting for the girls. They they know a lot of players they're going to be playing against. They they have a good feel of the teams are playing, um, and I think every